Beautiful song. Yes. And aren't you thankful for the blood? Yes. Yes. I, was, I was sitting there thinking um, that a number of years ago when uh, my brother was alive and when he was searching for, for something, I know what he was searching for, I know what God was doing, but my brother called me and he would call me at periods of times and, and he'd say, ask me questions and he says, you know what, I have a problem though. This blood, this talk of all this blood, it, it just seems so gruesome, it doesn't seem right. You know, I'd have to say it's true. It is a picture of gruesomeness, but there is a picture of love. That the blood was shed for our sin. And I'm thankful this, this morning for the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, thank you for coming this morning. You probably didn't realize I was preaching, so or else you would have been one of those people that called in sick this morning, right? <laughs> Those people must have got the message. But if you are here, thank you so much for coming this morning um, and being here. Um, I'm going to try to use um, the PowerPoint this morning. I am not one of those really talented people that can chew gum and walk at the exact same time. So let's see if I can keep up with my own screens, okay? My own message here. But I, I also want to say it was so, it's so good to have our children's ministry back and have our kids up here in the sanctuary and be with them this morning and, and, and just have fun and talk about God with them this morning. And I'm so thankful that as we were talking this morning about the life of Jonah, you know, God had a plan for Jonah. He had something special, and sometimes we don't always like God's plans for us. And we can try to run away from God and God's plans for us, but I'm glad that there's no place this morning that we can run away from God. There's nowhere you can go this morning, and I wanted these kids to know that as young as they are, I want to plant that seed that you may try to run from God, but you're not going to succeed. God's going to be there. And I'm thankful this morning. I can tell some of you old people too, God has a plan for you. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how, how slow you walk, how forgetful you may be, God has a plan for us. And he has a plan for you this morning. Don't try to run from it this morning. Well, this morning I want to talk to us about a portrait of God. You know, the image of God has become one of the most intriguing things in all of time. Have you ever thought about what does God look like? I mean, many things that we think about. I've sometimes tried to imagine, what does God look like? You know, the image of God, when I was preparing for this message, I, I actually went out, on, 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 out on, on the computer, I don't know what you call that, the great big wide world of internet, yeah, but it's bigger than that. Wow, there's Facebook, oh wow. And I began just to look, what does images of God, how does people portray God? And you know, God has been portrayed in many ways, and throughout time and history, we have seen artist renderings of God and the way that he looks, and it amazes me how people have portrayed God. You know, one of the probably most famous images of God was the one that I believe this was Leonardo da Vinci that painted there in the Sistine Chapel of God. Mankind is fascinated with what does God really look like? And we have to admit, y'all, we are a very visual society. This generation struggles with if they don't have visual cues. Think about it. We don't always, we have to use our imagination by seeing things. I was thinking just in the last two days, when I was thinking about this message, I was thinking there was a time for some of us when we used to listen to Adventures in Odyssey, and we weren't just kids, okay? And we would sit there and we had, I, I can remember my, my first Adventures and Odysseys was those cassette tapes. There was nothing to look at. You just had to listen and use your, your mind to imagine what Eugene Meltzner looked like. <laughs> no, he didn't look like me. But then as my kids got older, they created videos of Odyssey and you could watch them. I mean, they didn't have to use their imaginations. I thought the words that was talked about on Facebook this past week about unshackled. You know, we used to have to just listen and use your mind. But this generation, and, and not just the young people, even us older ones, we are so, we have to be able to see something to be able to comprehend it sometimes. But as we think about what does God look like? 
that we've all tried to imagine what God looks like. And let's be honest, our mind has created an image of God, very probably very similar to this, of an older man with white hair and maybe a beard and, and maybe, maybe even some wrinkles because that he's, uh, he's acquired over time. But can I ask you something? Does God really ever age? Eh? No. Can we wrap our minds around what God really looks like? There was a story of a little boy who was one time sitting there at the table drawing a picture. And his daddy walked up to him and said, son, what are you doing? He says, daddy, I'm drawing a picture of God. The father quickly rebuked his son and said, son, you can't do that. No one knows what God looks like. The boy stopped and he thought for a moment. And he said, well, dad... When I get done, they'll know what he looks like. <laughs> so what is it that God looks like? The image and the appearance of God has been a mystery down through the ages. You remember Moses himself, he came up to God and he said, God, Lord, show me thy glory. God says, all right, Moses, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you, and I'm going to set you here among this rock, and I'm going to pass by, but I'm going to tell you something. You cannot look on my face lest you die. You see, not even Moses, who came the closest to seeing the face of God, actually have seen God, but it doesn't cause us to quit wondering what God looks like. But there is a mystery as to what God looks like this morning. But I feel like God's word has given us a picture of what God really looks like. Now, first of all, friends, we need to understand something. What is a portrait? And I'm talking to you using this, this theme, a portrait of God. And it's a portrait is oftentimes described as a painting or a photograph or a drawing of a person, usually depicting um, from the shoulders up. And I'm not saying this morning that the Bible has literally painted a picture of God um, in the sense of, of, of a physical being that we have that kind of picture. But friends, I believe that it has given us a picture of his characteristics and who he is. We have all seen portraits. I love to look at old pictures. One of my most favorite things that I got from my grandma Davis was pictures, pictures of our families. And think when we look at pictures, it brings into focus people's individual characteristics, what they look like, the color of their eyes, the shape of their nose, the arch of their brow, the shape of their chin, all these characteristics coming together, together to give us what a person looks like. What if I showed you a picture of just a person's lips this morning? Have you ever seen those pictures? Just someone's lips? Oh, you can't tell much about a person by their lips. You can tell some things. What if there's been times I, I pulled my, my, my phone camera out and I looked at it and I thought, oh my goodness, what is that? I took a picture of my own nostrils. <laughs> You can't, and if I publish it, who in the world would be able to tell much about me? About my nostrils. But these pictures of only one characteristic does not tell you much, and it does not give you the clarity, nor are you able to really to get an ideal of a person. It is the culmination of an individual's characteristics coming together that brings to life and the reality of one that you're trying to understand. Think of some famous pictures that, and, and portraits that you have seen. I actually went out on, on, on the internet and, and I, there's a site out there called the 50 most famous portraits of all times. Okay? Some of these people I, I knew and some of them I didn't know. Y'all seen this one before? It's simply titled, we all, we all probably have, most of us have probably seen this. It's simply titled The Afghan Girl. You know, you don't have to say much there, but it speaks volumes, I think. And probably to Jenny and Steve, it probably touches a different chord than most of us. Y'all know who this is? What's that? It's an astronaut, but y'all know which one? It's Buzz Adrian. It's Buzz. Not Buzz Lightyear, Buzz. <laughs> This was Sister Fry's senior picture. 
No. <laughs> Marie Antoinette. Anyone know who this is? Lance Armstrong, cyclist. Beethoven. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He, he didn't make the top 50. He was like 51 or 52, okay? <laughs> and it's interesting that Jesus made the top 50 in, in portraits. I would like to know how they got that picture of him, though. <laughs> did, 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 did he set for that? But, you know, portraits can be from 100 years ago and, or from current times, as we've seen. They provide a connection to people we may have never met and helps us to bring life or a certain point or period into perspective. This morning, do you realize that the Bible has given to us the individual characteristics of God and who he is and what he really looks like? We have actually been given detailed descriptions of God. But this is key, church that we have to realize that just as we have individual characteristics, so does God. And just like our God's characteristics are individual to him, there is no one in this mighty universe who shares the same characteristics as God. But to truly understand and to get a correct understanding of who he is and what he looks like, we, we have to take these qualities and we have to look at them as a whole. We can't just take one uh, of a person's, as I said, the lips and just say, oh, I know who that is. We have to put it into perspective. We have to put it all together. And just as God has characteristics, we cannot just take one of God's characteristics and say, that's all of God. Because that's not all of God. You know, there are those in this universe, in this, in this time and age, who actually focus pictures just like that. You realize that? They draw pictures and they take certain characteristics or qualities and they focus and they draw a picture around that person's one quality. I mean, they may take someone's nose and they make a great big nose and the rest of their features may be really small. Only when all these qualities are put together do we have a correct picture or portrait of a person. But you know, those people that draw those pictures that... Have you ever seen them? You know what that's called? When the character. It is, it's usually a portrait that the artist has drawn, and it takes an individual's characteristics, and they over-exaggerate some, but not all, their characteristics. Many times these characteristics represents a person most often. Um, it's funny and it depicts the person but in a distorted manner. You know, they may take a chin and make it really large or ears really uh, big or ears. You all know who this is? <laughs> who do you think this is? This is Barack Obama. Now, you know, I'm sure if he saw this, he would probably chuckle like us. But he probably wouldn't want to use this as his um, official presidential portrait. You know, I actually got the, the contact for a man that does these. And I actually was going to send Dr. Fry a nice picture to him and see if he would draw it. <laughs> I, I didn't have time, but I may still do that. I'll share his with you, okay? Since he's in the top 51 or two, three, or somewhere up there, I'm sure he will. But you can see what they've done. They've taken a prominent part of him, and they focused on his chin, his teeth, and his ears. And, you know, they've over-exaggerated him. Now, yes, we know who it is, but they've really over-exaggerated. Over you all know who this is? Einstein. I mean, if you've seen a real picture, he's got big jowls. Jowls. the Queen of England. You all knew who these people were, but they over-exaggerated. They've really over, they've overdone in some things and qualities. And friends, if, if we are not careful, this I'm trying to get us to understand there is a portrait of God. There is an image of God. And there is also a danger sometimes, friends, if we are not careful, that we sometimes will start distorting what God really looks like. 
we will take certain qualities of his and we will suddenly begin to, I'll take that picture of the queen off, but we, we will sometimes begin to distort the image of God and what he really looks like. We'll focus on one or two things and I've heard preachers do that. And when they get done, God suddenly no longer looks like what God should look like, but he looks like some type, type of cartoon character and I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But friend, we've got to understand there's more to God than sometimes what we want to focus on. We've got to truly have the right understanding and perspective of all the qualities of God. And if we don't, my friend, then we are portraying to the world nothing more than a character. Have you ever heard a person say, if that's the kind of God that God is, then I don't want anything with it. I'll tell you what it is. Someone has portrayed God in a wrong way. And there's a lot of people looking at our life and they're listening to what we have to say. And I'm going to tell you, in this day and age, I'm going to say here in the United States, there's more people that don't know really what God is and who he is. And the only God that they're going to see is the God that lives in our life. And we better be careful that when we're talking and when we're living and we're trying to share God, friend, that we really have the right concept of who God is. Lord, help us. So this, this morning, my friends, as we are preparing to look at a portrait of God, I realize this morning that I am not going to get anywhere near near all the things about God. And I, I'm scheduled to preach in a few weeks, and I hope to come back and, and to touch on more. But this friend, morning, my friend, there's a portion of Scripture that I was preparing for that I want us to read, and it's over in Jeremiah chapter 9. It is these words. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, it says, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But this is what it says. But let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me. I want us to pause there for a minute. And all the things that we can boast about, my friends, he says that if we really want to, is that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. My friend, you know what he wants more than anything? He wants us to know him. He wants us to understand who he is. That means that we have to understand the characteristics. We've got to understand what he looks like. We've got to understand him. And that is what delights the Lord. So what does God look like? What are the characteristics? As I was studying for that, the first thing that, that, that I, that I am, would like to present on what God looks like is the infinitude of God. The infinitude of God. We read in the scriptures, great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. That's found over in Psalms 147.5. But we also read over in Psalms 145.3, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. My friend, the first characteristic that I think that we need to explore concerning God is the infinitude of God. This says that God has no boundaries, no limits, no beginning, and no end. You know, oftentimes we talk about things having um, unlimited, you all know what I'm talking about, unlimited wealth. Now, I don't know what that is because um, my bank account's not anything like that. Unlimited energy. Sometimes we look at these little kids and we think, do they ever run out? But there is. Unlimited minutes on our cell phones. But really? Isn't there so many minutes in a day? You know, when we use the word boundless and unlimited and infinite, these are words that can only really be used when describing God. They can only be used when describing God. When we think about God, when we think about measuring things, for examples, do you realize that they know how big the sun is? How big the moon is? 
and they can even estimate how much this world weighs. Do you know they know approximately how much water is in the ocean? Y'all, I, I, I thought that was unmeasurable. But do you realize the only thing that is really unmeasurable is God? We know the distance between each of the planets in our solar systems, and these things, my friend, boggles my mind. The idea that we can calculate the amount of water in the ocean and how big the sun is, it is measurable. And adding enough zeros, we can eventually get the answer. But my friend, there is no algebraic equation, and there is to God's power. There is no mathematic um, way to calculate God. There is no way to find the ends or the limits to who God really is. God knows no constraints, nor does he have any boundaries. I love the way that C.S. Lewis described the infinitude of God. So stay with me here. If you could take a sheet of paper, he says, a sheet of paper that infinitely extended in every direction, and if you could take a pencil and make a line one inch long on that paper, just one inch, that would represent time. And when you started moving your pencil, that was the beginning of time. And when it stops, that is the end of time. And everything else around that one inch line drawn, as far as it could go, is God. You see, God has no limit. God reaches infinitely in every direction and beyond the comprehension of man. The great writer A.W. Tozer said this, if God had all the power, listen to this, if God had all the power there is, except just a little bit, and if someone else had the little bit of power hoarded that God could not get to, then he wouldn't be God. We couldn't say that this God is of infinite power because he wouldn't be of infinite power. He'd just be really close. If God had goodness, but there was one spot that wasn't, then he wouldn't be our God. If God had love, but didn't have all love, just 99 and 9 tenths, God still wouldn't be God. God to be God must be infinite in all that he is. He must have no bounds and no limits, no stopping place, no point beyond which he cannot go. When you think of God or anything about God, you have to realize that God is infinite. Y'all, my mind stops working. You know why? Because my mind is, it's not infinite. It has limits. But God goes on. And you know, I thought about that, Brother Doug, when I thought about the goodness of God. There is not a point, there is not a spot in him that is not good. It is all good. There is not a part of God that does not love this morning. He is all and completely love. Through and through, till there is no point. I mean, he is love. Think about the situation and the problem that you're facing this morning and what the enemy is telling you about your problem. He's telling you, do you think God really cares this morning? I can tell you that God cares. He's an infinite God. Can God really fix this problem? I can tell you, God has no limits. There's no boundaries. The enemy of our soul wants nothing more than for us to question the infinity of God, to begin to question God's ability, his powers, and create limits with God. That's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to begin to create limits to God. He wants us to question God. Could I ever be so bad or do so many wrong things that God won't forgive me? No. Can my sin be so bad that the grace of God can't reach me? No. Can I cross that point of no return? No. Can I quench the spirit from ever wanting to deal with me? No. To say that I have crossed a line, friend, 
And I want to be careful here because I have heard it preached before that in altar services where you don't want to cross this line, I'm going to tell you something that the God I serve this morning, there is no line. He can go to the furthest extents. He can reach the vilest sinner. There's not a person too dirty. There's not a sin that is too gross. There is not a deed that is beyond the reach of God. And I thought about the, the prisons this morning and the vilest one that is prison this morning, that God's grace is able to reach even that vilest sinner this morning. And it goes beyond. His love doesn't stop. There's no limits. There's no boundary. God just keeps on going. What is your problem this morning? Does it seem too big for you? Can I tell you there's nothing too big for God this morning? You see, every characteristic of God hangs on this very thought that God has no limits. Think about it. God's love has no limits. God's power has no limits. God's wisdom has no limits. God's justice has no limits. God's grace has no limits. God's holiness has no limit. This morning, if you're questioning anything like, can God, can I tell you, he can. Put that aside and realize that God is limitless this morning. That loved one that you're praying for, can I tell you, God is able to save them. That problem that keeps you up at night and you wonder how in the world is it going to be solved? Can I tell you, God has the answer this morning. That burden that is bearing you down this morning, you think I can't take anymore. Can I tell you, there's one that can bear it up this morning. There's, there's never a need to worry that God will ever st be stooped by our problems. We never have to worry that God's grace and love will ever run out. We never need to worry that his love, his forgiveness will expire. We never need to worry that God will give up on us, get tired of us or even bail on us. You see, God is an infinite God. He has always been and will always be. There is no beginning. There is no end. You see, he's infinite. He never tires. He never grows old. He never runs out and he has no end. He's going to be there when we're all done. You see, God is an infinite God this morning. Tozer said this. I loved his words. He is, he is such a great writer. When he was describing the word infinite, he says this is what it means. Infinite means so much that no one can grasp it. <laughs> there you go. Infinite means so much that nobody can grasp it. We mean by infinite that God knows no limits, no bounds, and no end. What God is he is without boundaries. All that God is, he is without bounds or limit. I'm telling you this morning, friends, the portrait of this God that we want to see is that he is a God that has no end, no limits, no boundaries. My friends, I'm glad that I'm serving a God this morning that is an infinite God. The thought of an infinite God. Oh, my. I have limits, you have limits. This world has boundaries. Everything in life has limits. But God has no limits, no boundaries, no end. He has been and always will be. My friends, this is an infinite God. I'd like us to, to end with this, this song here. Can you stand with me? There are no boundaries, no limits to what God can do, to what he can do through me and through you. If you but trust him and believe that his promise is true, it's according to the power that's worth Ah. Uh -huh.
Now, friends, I just this morning touched on just one of the characteristics of God. There is so much more of God to really be able to explore. And um, in a few weeks, I hope that I can touch on more. But this morning, I hope that we can leave this church and know that there is a God. You know, sometimes we, we want to put God in a box. And sometimes we, we, the, the devil wants us to, 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 to try to put limits on who he is. But just let your mind realize that this morning, he is an infinite God. Oh, precious and heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We're thankful, Lord, for who you are. And Lord, though this morning our minds cannot even wrap around the thought of this, this infinite God, you are so much bigger. And we're thankful, Lord, that we can't wrap our minds around it. Because, Lord, if we could, then you wouldn't be much of a God. But we're thankful you are more of a God than our mind can even wrap around. And, Lord, that you are able to do exceedingly above all that we could ever want, wish, or desire. Lord, you are infinite. And this morning, we serve you, and we thank you, and we praise you. Go with us, I people. Keep them safe and bring them back again. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you.